Hello, this is John with Coach.Win. Each week, the coaches at Coach.Win get together and share best practices. We share articles we've written, articles we've read, and other sources of information that we think are valuable. We're going to be creating those into a podcast. Because we believe so much in AI, we're going to let the podcast be created by us uploading all those articles and have it automatically recorded. So while the voices you're about to hear are AI... The content behind it is all generated by the coaches at Coach.Win. Enjoy the podcast. Welcome back to the Deep Dive. You know those moments you're in a team meeting and and things get a little tense. Someone starts pointing fingers or everyone's uh, suddenly very interested in their shoes. Yeah, those moments, we've all been there. Oh, we've all been there. It's like the air gets sucked right out of the room. Exactly. (laughs) Today we are diving into how to transform those dreaded accountability conversations from something people fear into, believe it or not, moments of growth and even celebration. You sent over some really interesting materials, a a fable called The Case of the Leadership Team, a practical guide called Help and Celebrate, and even a Harvard Business Review article. We're really covering all the bases here. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic combination because it, it really mirrors how we experience these situations in real life, right? There's the relatable story, the practical advice, and then the, the kind of scientific why behind it all. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump right into this fable. So we've got Jack, the CEO, who's trying to figure out why a product launch went sideways. Poor Jack. He's got <laughs> Maria, the COO, trying to, like, be the voice of reason while Samuel over in sales, well, he's throwing out blame like confetti. Oh, yeah. And we can't forget about Lily from marketing, who's basically built a defensive fortress out of PowerPoint slides. And then you've got Tim, the CFO, just totally channeling his inner clam, hoping nobody asks him a question. Right. The fable does such a good job at capturing those almost instinctive reactions we have when things go wrong in a team setting. Defend, deflect attack it's it's like a dance we all know yeah it's so true but here's where it gets really interesting so this fable it kind of subtly points to a much larger issue which is psychological safety and that's where this hbr article comes in right right you know when jack immediately jumps to blaming others that defensive reaction that is like such a classic sign of low psychological safety and the hbr article does a really good job of unpacking why this happens it's like that old saying when the only tool you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail when we don't feel safe it's like our brains just they they grab the closest hammer blame defensiveness silence whatever feels safest in the moment right Right. and the hbr article goes even deeper explaining how this amygdala hijack literally shuts down our ability to think clearly and creatively it's really fascinating wait hold on Amygdala hijack. For those of us who haven't, you know, brushed up on our brain anatomy lately, what what is going on here? They like it's like the brain's alarm system, right? So it's always scanning for threats, and when it senses danger, like say, you know, being publicly blamed in a meeting, it triggers that fight or flight response. Oh, and so that's when, uh, you know, this this floods your system with hormones, and and suddenly you're not thinking about creative problem solving; you're thinking about survival. Like, how do I get out of here? Wow. Okay. So it's not even just that we're like choosing to be defensive or closed off. Our brains are literally hijacking the conversation. Exactly. No wonder those meetings can be so unproductive. We're all just running from invisible saber-toothed tigers. Exactly. And that is why understanding this whole idea of psychological safety is so crucial. It's like foundational to having these uh, more productive, healthier conversations. So how do we actually create that feeling of safety? Because, I mean, let's be real. Most of us aren't like going into these meetings trying to trigger each other's fight or flight responses. Right. Right. It's it's usually not intentional, but it's often the unintended consequence of you know, unclear expectations or communication breakdowns. And that's where this help and celebrate guide comes in with some seriously refreshing advice, hmm. because instead of approaching accountability as this like big, scary thing, it frames it as an opportunity for growth and and get this yeah. even celebration. Yeah. And it and it all starts with clarity. Yes. The guide is all about making sure everyone's crystal clear on what success looks like from the get-go. Right. It talks about using scorecards, outlining everyone's roles and responsibilities, and really nailing down those clock and calendar metrics. Oh, those are so important. You know how frustrating it is to like embark on a road trip without a clear destination or like an estimated arrival time? Clock and calendar metrics are like having a GPS for your team goals. Everyone knows where you're headed and when you're supposed to get there, which just makes that whole journey a lot less stressful, you know? It's like that saying, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. 
except in this case, it probably won't. Uh. But there's this one tip in the guide that I just thought was genius. <laughs> it's it's so simple, but I think it could make a world of difference, and that's seeking permission. Oh, yeah. It's such a small shift, but it's so powerful. Instead of just launching into a critique or, you know, feedback, the guide suggests starting with a phrase like, do I have your permission to, you know, talk about or... Mm -hmm. Would it be helpful if I shared my perspective on it's like extending an invitation instead of just barging into someone's mental space with a laundry list of things that they did wrong? You yeah. know, yeah, it's acknowledging that the other person has agency in this and you're creating a space for dialogue, not a monologue. And and this little the subtle shift in language can completely change how that feedback is received. For sure. It helps lower those defenses and opens the door for this like more collaborative, problem-solving approach. It's like switching from here's what you did wrong mm. to how can we work together to make this even better? Exactly. And and speaking of making things better, this guide doesn't stop there. It goes on to give this treasure trove of really practical communication tips. Yeah. One of my favorites is the, the power of I statements. Oh, such a game changer. Instead of pointing fingers with, you know, you did this or you should have done that, focusing on your own experience and feelings keeps the conversation from getting, you know, personal and, and turning into like a blame game. Exactly. Well, so instead of saying like, you missed the deadline, yeah. you might say, I felt concerned when the deadline was missed because it impacts. Yes. You know, and then explain the impact. Yes. It moves the conversation away from blame and towards like understanding the impact of those actions and finding those solutions. Totally. And Guide also talks about, you know, staying really focused during these conversations. Like, we're not dredging up past grievances or going off on tangents here. It's about being very specific about the behavior or the, the situation at hand. Right. Because remember those saber-toothed tigers, mm -hmm. vague accusations or bringing up past issues. Just it's like throwing more meat in the water, you know. Well, staying clear, specific and, and focused on solutions helps maintain that sense of psychological safety. It totally reminds me of that part in the HBR article where it talks about replacing blame with curiosity. Yeah, I love that. Because when we approach these conversations as an opportunity to like understand those different perspectives and, and find solutions together, it, it creates a much more collaborative and ultimately you know successful outcome, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's about shifting from who's at fault to, okay, what, what happened and what can we learn from it? And that's where those active listening skills come in. Uh, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Really tuning in to what the other person is saying, asking those clarifying questions, showing that empathy that can just completely transform the conversation. It's like that quote, right? Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Mm. I think it's really easy to want to just rush into like problem solving mode. Right. But sometimes yeah. just like taking that time to actually listen can make all the difference in the world. Absolutely. And you know what goes really well with active listening? Asking for feedback on your own delivery. Oh, that's such a good point. And the Help and Celebrate guy, they touch on this too. Like saying something like, how did that land for you? Or is there a different way I could I could have approached this conversation? I mean, it could feel, you know, a little vulnerable, but but it's so powerful. It is incredibly powerful because one, it shows that you genuinely care about how your message is being received. But two, it also reinforces that sense of psychological safety because you're basically saying to the other person, hey, I'm I'm in this with you. I'm I'm also open to learning and growing, too. It's like you're modeling the behavior you want to see in others. Exactly. You're saying feedback is a two way street yeah. and, and I value your perspective. Precisely. It reminds me of that anecdote in the HBR article, the uh, the one about the executive who received feedback that that her communication style it was very direct and and data driven but it sometimes made people feel like they were like being interrogated rather mm -hmm. than being you know included in the discussion yeah and and instead of getting defensive she actually thanked them for their honesty and then like made a very conscious effort to to adjust her approach i love that that's great yeah it's just a good reminder that we all have blind spots but you know what about those really tough cases the ones where someone seems like stuck in that cycle of blame or defensiveness or they're just not taking ownership. What do we do then? Well, I think that's where, you know, those coaching skills really become so important. OK. Remember, it's about being a guide, not a punisher. Right. And the Help and Celebrate Guide has a, a whole section about addressing these more persistent issues. Yeah. And it starts with like acknowledging the person's effort. Right. And, yeah. and reiterating that you're like committed to their success. Yes. 
You want to start by really emphasizing that you believe in them and that you're there to support them. And then you can, you know, kind of gently start to identify those recurring patterns that you've observed, but always through this lens of curiosity, not judgment. Right. So instead of saying you're always late with your reports, you might say something like, I've I've noticed that sometimes your reports come in after the deadline. Is there is there anything that's preventing you from from meeting those deadlines? Exactly. It's about understanding the why behind the behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they need additional training or, you know, clearer expectations, or maybe they just they need a better understanding of of how their work impacts the team. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. And sometimes it might just be a matter of like tweaking your own communication style. Right. Or approach right. Yeah. Like like in that HBR article, maybe sharing information in a in a different way or providing more context. That can make all the difference. Absolutely. It's about being flexible and recognizing that what works for one person might not work for another. The the key is to keep those lines of communication open. You know, approach these conversations with empathy, with a genuine desire to to help and never underestimate the power of even these small changes. Wow. We've covered so much ground today from like the science of psychological safety to like practical communication tips to to even those like strategies for navigating those extra tough conversations. It's a lot. If I didn't know better, I would say you gave us a master class in turning accountability from something that we dread into something that that we can actually look forward to. It's all about shifting our perspective. Yeah. Right. And recognizing that accountability when done well is really about empowering people to do their best work. It's about fostering that culture of like trust and support and, and continuous growth. Yes. So for anyone listening who's feeling like inspired to transform how their team handles accountability, where where would you suggest they, they even begin? I would say pick one thing from this whole conversation, from this deep dive that really resonated with you. Maybe it's incorporating more I statements. Maybe it's seeking permission before offering feedback. Or maybe it's just as simple as asking, how can I how can I better support you? Just choose one small thing and, and try it out. Commit to trying it out in your next team meeting. And pay attention to what happens. Right. You might be surprised by by the positive ripple effects that that even those small changes can can make. Absolutely. And and remember, building a culture of psychological safety and effective accountability, it it's a journey. It's not a destination. That's so true. There are going to be bumps in the road, but with each conversation, you you have this opportunity to learn and grow and create a much more positive and and productive experience for everyone. And and who knows, maybe one day those accountability conversations, they won't be so dreaded. Great. Maybe they'll even become something that we look forward to. A chance to, to connect and collaborate and, and celebrate our collective success. That's it for today's deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep experimenting, and, and keep those curious minds hungry for knowledge.